Welcome to Vibrant Life, and welcome to our Vibrant Life 2022 Stewardship Appeal. Also, welcome to my home. If you worshiped with us in 2020 through COVID, you'll recognize this space and you'll also recognize this tree. This is a redwood tree that I purchased as a seedling a couple of years ago when my family and I were spending some time on the West Coast hiking through the redwood forests. It's amazing that something so small can get so big. And my tree has grown as well. And growth is really the center of our Vibrant Life stewardship appeal this year. Vibrant Life is more. More love, more joy, more peace, more kindness, growth, and all the fruits of the Spirit. And also more generosity. Over the past weeks, we've all been asked to prayerfully consider how we can grow in our generosity. Whether we are lifetime sustaining givers, if we've given sporadically, or if we have not yet begun to give. Wherever you are in your giving, take some time and have a conversation with God, your family, and consider how you can grow in generosity. Because your generosity make stories like this one possible. Um, hi, I'm Klee Olson, and I just wanted to share my story. Um, so when we first started coming to Resurrection, my daughter Liliana was diagnosed with dyslexia, um, and she was very self-conscious about wanting to let people know that she had it and didn't, was really embarrassed about it. Um, and so she didn't share it with very many people. I think she shared it with maybe her teacher at the time and then a couple close friends. Um, so when we came here, she was just about to start confirmation, and so she'd come in to the door, um, came into confirmation, was with Andrew Absey, and she was super excited, um, and Andrew had asked the group to share something interesting about themselves. And Liliana had told the group that she had dyslexia, and Andrea had said, oh my gosh, what a great gift that God has given you. Um, thank you for sharing that. Liliana got in the car that night and was super excited, and she says, Mom, you're not going to believe it. I told everybody um, at church that I had dyslexia, and Andrea told me it was a great gift. Um, and I was a little bit taken back because she hadn't shared it with anybody else prior to that, and so I had asked her the question. I said, well, what made you want to share? And she said, Mom, I just felt so comfortable um, that I just knew that it was the right time to share. Um, and so going forward from there, Liliana had then continued to share that she had dyslexia with many other people. And so I just wanted to say thank you to the congregation for allowing Liliana to have that um, opportunity to feel comfortable enough to share that with you and with her group. So thank you. What an amazing story. That's what resurrection is all about. Well, one of the other reasons why I invited you back into my home is that it reminds me of how far we've come as a congregation since 2020. It's been a tough couple of years and many of us are still finding life to be a big struggle and our, our prayers are with you. And over these last several years at Resurrection, our financial picture has been tough as well. Resurrection has lost just over 10% of its offering since 2019. This is directly related to several families who through life circumstance have moved out of the community closer to adult children into retirement or both. In 2021, the, the governmental program, the payroll protection program, was able to step into that gap of the 10%. And this year, in 2022, the payroll tax rebate that we were able to collect through the CARES Act was able to step in this year's 10% gap as well. However, in 2023, we at Resurrection those of us who have been covering the 90% of the offering plus new givers need to stretch to cover the lost 10%. And I know we can do it. Over the next days and weeks, you will be receiving information on how we can do this together. There will be a step chart including, uh, included in that paperwork that will be showing us the range of current givers here at Resurrection and the range of potential gifts, that if we meet that potential, we will reach our financial goals. I invite you to find where you are in the range of gifts, and then please pray through a couple of questions. 
Some of them are, how does my giving compare with the other ways I use my money? How adequately does my giving reflect my gratitude to God for all the blessings that I have received? Where would I be if, if I could double my offerings? Can I consider doing that? And how much more could I give if I really wanted to? And if I'm not currently giving, what would it take to start? I have found myself on that chart and I have been asking myself those same questions. So I invite you to join me in growing our generosity. Hi, I'm Deb Daly, and we have been part of Resurrection, my family and I, for 21 years. And our guys grew up here. We have so many friends that are a big part of our lives. But you know, as I think about it, it really, um, Resurrection became ours when we got involved. And we've been involved in a variety of different ministries and teams. It really then, you have a sense of ownership, I think, when um, you get involved. Um, I've often said that uh, when you can um, notice that the bathroom needs toilet paper and you can go and find it and put it in there, um, that's ownership of resurrection. That's how I feel. And yet, at the same time, um, it also takes cash, we realize, um, when you own something to support that. And that sometimes used to be kind of hard. It was like, um, well, weren't we going to spend that money on something else? And I didn't like that feeling. And so some years ago, I added to my daily prayers, um, please, Lord, make me a generous person. And you know, when you say that every day, when an opportunity to be generous comes along, you're generous. And it changes your heart, and it, it changes everything, especially about how you feel here at Resurrection. 